Welcome to the Unfair Advantage Experience. This is a special part two episode with Miss Debbie Campany, a multi-talented, powerful woman of God that is bold and willing to share her testimony in order to bring freedom to others. Today, we will be talking about how walking in your power through Christ gives others the power to do the same. That's powerful. How does she do this? Join us and you'll find out. Come to a place where the lost are found. This is the Unfair Advantage. Welcome to the Unfair Advantage Experience with your host, Robbie Eddy. Join us as we share and discuss real life stories with individuals who have experienced the Unfair Advantage. So you may recognize today's guest, Debbie Campany. This is part two of our interview. Be sure to watch the first interview where she reveals how her testimony is bringing freedom to others. But today's conversation is going to go a bit different. Now let's get started. Debbie, welcome back. I mean, obviously the last episode, that was powerful. And I'm just, I'm so excited that you came back on the show. Thanks, Robbie, for having me back. I cannot wait to see what yeah. God has in store for us. Amen. To me, it's pretty evident that God knew your purpose from the very beginning. All events lead to now and your ministry. It reminds me of Roman 8, chapter 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are the call to according to his purpose. God's hand has always been all over your life. That's obvious. How important it is to you to share your testimony? Oh my gosh, my testimony is my experience, strength, and hope, right? Yeah. It's, um, it's everything that God has, has taken me through, has blessed me with, Amen. has shown me. Um, it's what you know, I can give to others. Yeah, amen. It's a way to give to others that doesn't cost me anything except what I've walked through and except what I've learned. Yeah, you know, like we were talking on the last show, like God has taken the things that, you know, the enemy meant for bad and now you use them, you know, to save other people's lives. You know, I do the same thing, man. And, and when you go through, you know, all, the Bible, all those people were the same thing. Like I always say, they were like, they were underdogs. They were... There were people that you would never imagine that would be called by God. And God does that purposely because he raised them up. And I believe, like knowing you myself personally, especially, you know, yesterday in the office when you came in here, was you were prophesying on me and my wife. And, like, I was weeping because I felt the presence of God, man. And, and your words were, were powerful and true. And there's been many times that, you know, I've, I've, you know, been prompt in my prayer room to text you. And every time I do that, that's God. Like, I don't go patting people on the back or like trying to, if I feel a reason to text somebody, I do it. And you know, one of the thing, one of the things I would like to know is like, you know, how, what do you do in your, what do you do in your daily walk to basically maintain the, you know, the, how you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, for me, it, prayer, prayer and meditating on, on God and my purpose yeah. and what he has for me is like the foundational, uh, Thing that I do every day. Amen. I literally get out of bed every Amen. morning and get on my knees Amen. and surrender my day to God. Amen. And, um, you know, throughout the day, I continually, you know, if I'm powerless over a situation, yeah. I admit that I'm powerless over it yeah. and turn it over to God Amen. and to His will for my life. But the prayer, the meditation, the reading of God's Amen. Word, the, um, you know, being a part of a fellowship. Yeah. Um, where you really can feel the presence of God. Amen. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, I was Amen. always moved by praise and worship. Yeah. And my husband was more moved by the preaching. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just so interesting how people can be moved by different things. And, um, you know, the praise and worship to me in, in that time yeah. that I have, have with God is, is so important to me. And it's throughout the day. I can be driving down the driving down the road and be uh -huh. talking to God, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's just, it's really, it, it is a daily walk for me. Well, there's one thing that you said that reminds me, the Apostle Paul said, I die of my flesh daily. And, and like what I try to tell people all the time about this whole unfair advantage, like the unfair, unfair advantage is, is Jesus. That's the anointing, it's Jesus Christ. But it's not just, you know, knowing the word of God, it's applying the word of God to your life. Because that's what brings the wisdom. Like you, can, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but without any Holy Spirit, it ain't going to do anything. So one of the main powerful things that you said where you talked about, you know, the pr praying. Like praying is the most important. I, 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 I think I'd rather go without. Praying to me is like breathing. 
Like I won't leave my house. My wife will tell you, it's funny, like the same thing with you. My wife, uh, she, she, she loves worship. I love hearing the preachers. It's like the same thing. It's kind of funny and it's weird how me and Ed and all that, it's like we got the same thing going on. But I, but I think about like how important prayer truly is. Like a lot of people don't realize that. The Bible says the prayers of a righteous man veil us much. Like it's his word. It doesn't come back voice. So I always think about that. Like I don't leave my house without praying. I don't care if I have a huge job going on, million dollars. It doesn't even matter. If I'm if I didn't pray that morning, I ain't I I, I ain't leaving until I pray because I just I know for a fact what it's you know what it's gonna bring. But what would you what would you tell others or tell our audience, uh, people that are like seeking deliverance in their life? Well, you know, seek the deliverer. Um, <laughs> Amen, <laughs> the deliverer is, is God. That's good, that's um, good. It's not a man. It's that's not it. a woman. That's it right. is God. Amen. And um, for me, part of my my program in and my recovery yeah. is um, 12 steps. Amen. And I'm very involved in my 12 step yes. recovery program. And, um, you know, I have found through working through the issues within my own, yeah. my own life, God has shone, shined the light on them. Yeah. Oh. And when the awareness happens, if I have willingness, in awareness, yeah. I will have elevation like, because willingness, awareness, and the my and problem. the elevation through my awareness, I'm willing to take those steps, wow. and I have to have the willingness to look in those dark places. And Robbie, some people will never have the courage to look at the dark places yeah. in their in their lives and the things that have happened to them. And I, you know, I'm going to talk to them as well mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter. God already knew yes. it. He knew you before you were here. That's right. He knows how it's going to end. He knows everything in the middle. He knows if you're going to say yes, if you're going to say no, if you're going to turn left, nah. if you're going to turn right. And that's one of the things that I've always fallen back on through nah. everything that I've been through is the fact that God knew already that that was going to happen. Nah, nah. And, you know, so for every, every way, he's made a way out for me. For everything that happens, he's made a way out. But yeah. it's still up to me that's to do it. work. To do, to do, put feet on my faith. Amen. Put the, put the feet on them. Yeah, what you're saying reminds me of, it's an action word. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, you know, I'm involved in, you know, my life too. I'm, I'm open about it. I'm in a, I'm in a 12 step program too, and which completely changed my life. I took the principles of all the 12 steps and applied them to my life. What you were just talking about, the action, putting the feet down, and the, and the Bible talks about the shoes of peace, which is the gospel. That means my feet got to match my mouth. If my feet are doing the work, it's going to show, you know, like when the Bible talks about, you will know them by their fruit, you know, the fruit will come off me. You can tell from false prophets or plastic preachers from the fruit from their life. They ain't got to say anything because the Bible actually told us, you know, how to do that. Like that, hey man, if you run across something that's fake, there's, there's going to, it's impossible for a dead tree to give good fruit and it's impossible for a good tree to give bad fruit. So it's pretty powerful. Listen guys, up next, God gave Debbie a powerful gift, and we're gonna find out about that. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus said, If any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. The prayer of agreement is our most powerful tool for creating changes. Has it been hard for you to get traction in one specific area of your life? Has moving forward felt impossible? Are you struggling in your mind with fearful imaginations, depression, financial concerns? Has someone caused you hurt that you feel like you will never recover from? Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says, Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We are a ministry of prayer. Robbie wants to pray for you right now. Go to our website, click the button for prayer. It's free. Robbie will pray for you immediately. We touched on your prophetic gift in the last show, and I really want to dive deeper. The Holy Spirit allows you to see the hearts of people and to speak life and healing to them. Now that is powerful. Can you tell us how having that gift has strengthened your walk with the Lord? Um... Well, when you're entrusted with a gift like that, and you don't exactly know starting out that it's a gift, um, when 
I mean, early on when I started in church, I was in a five-fold ministry. Mm -hmm. So they understood what was going on with me and I was able to be taught. Mm -hmm. So I realized that it was a lot to be entrusted with. And I had some really good mentors mm -hmm. and some really good teachers and that operated in that thing called wisdom that we've talked about, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, because you can have a, a, I call them the parking lot prophets that um, catch you out in the parking lot and they say that they have a word from God. And I'm not saying that, yeah. that they don't have a word, but, you know, you have to operate in a level of wisdom yeah. when you receive a prophetic word Amen. and you operate in, a, in wisdom when you give the prophetic word. Yeah. It's like if I have something that's very, very personal for an individual, yeah. I will not announce it out loud. I will walk up to the individual and speak to, them, yeah, speak, to, speak to them quietly. So how has it strengthened my, yeah. my walk is um, yeah. uh, when you're rejected, yeah. um, you learn to trust God. When you uh, spend a lot of time alone because I've been hidden a lot of times under yeah. the shadow of God's wing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, you learn to trust God. Yeah. And so it has strengthened because even though, you know, people may, may reject me yeah. because moving in this gift, sometimes people don't want to hear, yeah. you know, and you know, a prophet's not accepted in their own home okay. or their own business yeah. or possibly their own church or their yeah. own area, people around them. Right. And, um, you know, if I have a word and I share it, I just let it go and walk away. And a lot of times I can't even remember what I've, what I've spoken. So it's, it's strengthened me because it's just drawn me closer to God. That's powerful. So, um, you know, tell us how important it is to stay, to stay plugged in and accountable. Oh, well, this is one of my, um, about three years ago, um, I got to spend uh, a month and a half in the desert in Arizona and I would walk around in, in the circle. Oh, this wow. was the only area that I would be able to walk around in. And um, God spoke to me, grace with accountability. And what that means is I tell on myself. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I tell on myself, I am taking a risk, right? But I am operating and giving myself the grace, but I'm sharing with you whatever mm -hmm. it is that I'm going through and see, the enemy wants to, has tried to silence my voice since I was probably born in actuality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, you know, I, I hadn't shared this, but, but I was think I think I was like two, two years old and I was running through the house with a pencil and I fell on it and jammed it and it went into my back of my throat. Oh, and yeah. so I know that, that the enemy has tried to silence me yeah. and, um, you know, part of my journey was finding my voice again, but also in finding my voice, wow. it's like God's voice is able to flow through me freer. And so, yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's just totally just me seeking God yeah. and doing what I need to do for myself and keeping myself, you know, rested, healthy, yeah. balanced, um, being aware, um, being willing, but the grace with the accountability piece mm -hmm. is like, that just changes even the word grace. Yeah. You know, before you, uh, before you came to the show, like Bishop was coming and he was like, hey man, before he goes, you know, he goes, which I, I know you're a prophetess. He goes, don't call Debbie, she doesn't want to be called a prophetess, which I, like that's powerful because that shows humility and really shows because it's like anybody who wants to put that in front of their name or put something like that, like, you know, I've and I've learned like, let someone else call you that, if anything. Don't call yourself that. So when he told me that, you know, he came in or he's like, she doesn't want to call. I wasn't going to do that anyway. But I'm saying hearing that just shows like, you know what I'm saying, like true wisdom of like what you've been through in your life and using that. And even you talking now, not not giving words to people. I've, I've learned a lot of that along my road with my wife. We've, there's so much we've learned along the way of making mistakes. And the Bible says in a multitude of counsel, there's safety and wisdom. So it's like, how important it is to like have counsel in your life. Like w what's your thoughts on that? Well, it's, it's really important because, you know, in learning how to operate in a gifting 
you know, whether it be the prophetic or yeah. any other gift, it could be the gift of giving, you know, um, there is wisdom involved in that. Yeah. And for me, in the prophetic, it's knowing and it's listening to what, you know, I'm I'm hearing, right? I'm hearing what I'm hearing and feeling from the Holy Spirit. And there's been times when when it's been share this, don't share that. Or nope, they're not ready for that. Hold on to it. So there is a lot of, you know, not being filled with zeal and going out in now I believe God has grace grace for anybody that's starting out in ministry, right? But it's just like that, the, just having that awareness. And like you said, you learn these things and, you know, knowing what to say, knowing, knowing when to say it, just allowing God to flow through me, but also operating in that wisdom and really taking your time to hear what God is saying. Because, you know, part of, of, my prayer is just listening. It's not always talking. It's just listening in, in that still small voice. And, and that piece right there for me, that still small voice, it's like, that's, I, I pay attention when it gets real quiet. Yeah. That's powerful. <laughs> Guys, Debbie has more powerful revelation and insight. When we come back, stay tuned. We'll see you then. This is an exclusive offer for our Unfair Advantage Experience audience. Don't miss out on getting Robbie Eddy's award-winning, powerful, must-read book, The Unfair Advantage, The Key to Supernatural Power and Freedom, and his anointed 40-day devotional, Your Journey to Supernatural Power and Freedom. You'll also get his audio CD teaching, Receiving the Unfair Advantage Anointing. Plus, you'll receive the Unfair Advantage wristband, don't miss out on these powerful resources. Get yours today. Order your copies online today at www.unfairadvantageministry.com or call us to order 1-877-786-3247. Welcome back, guys, to the Unfair Advantage Experience. I got more Debbie Campany here. You know, like me personally, I know the anointing that that you and your husband have on business. Like, you know, he actually changed my life forever. You know, working alongside your husband and building such a successful business, you know, what are some of the principles that you believe led to your success? Well, um, the first one was, you know, our pastor taught us how to write our vision down. Ooh, yeah. And our pastor at the time was very instrumental in speaking this business yeah. into um, Ed's life. And, but he also encouraged him to write down the vision, yeah. make it plain, yeah. so that those that see it yeah. can run with it. And then yeah. he, uh, he also told him to set, set goals for yourself. Yeah. And so he would set yearly goals and as we stepped out into, into our business. And, and we're, we, ta we were tithers, we were givers, and, and we dedicated our business as a ministry right from the beginning. Yeah. And it has given to all, all over the world. And you would not believe that a roof would make that much of a difference in a person's life, but it really does. Any more than you would believe that the AC, right, yeah. would make such a big difference, but it really, really does. And, but also we've been fortunate to be able to, to pay off more, a mortgage for a church and to, yeah. you know, um, help pastors in Turkey and Romania and Africa and I mean all over. And this yeah. is just this roofing company Amen. that is um, is doing this. But so the tithing, the giving, the um, vision, the goals. Now this is being in business with my husband. There cannot be two heads. There can only be one head. Yeah. <laughs> so my husband and I are partners yeah. and um, but we we implemented this this rule, yeah. you know, um, he stays in his lane, I stay in, stay in mine, yeah. and when there's a major decision, we'll come together and one has uh, one veto vote a year. <laughs> so if one of us disagree with the other, we get to veto it and overrule them. So, you know, even that is, is a, a principle because hey. it's, you know, it's learning how to get along and to, to um, you know, compromise. And so, you know, I submit to him within the business. And even though I'm over the finances, you know, 
he make he still makes the the decisions and and I'm okay with that and you know I'm a very strong personality person Ed and I are both strong personalities <laughs> and sometimes it can it it has been very righteously angered at times you know but we've worked through that yeah you know thinking about you know obviously Ed and you know what, what I've learned from both of you guys so much with how important I try to tell people like tithing isn't a money thing it's a spiritual thing mm -hmm. you know and Ed taught me how to tithe how to sow love offerings are completely different than tithes. Write vows, write your goals down. I have the actual piece of paper that I, every year that he gave me, I write down my goals. And then the next year I come up and I start to mark them. And I can see where God begins to move. And what people don't realize is by following those in, in the Old Testament, I started to see God move in the New Testament. So it's, it's, it's really important. All this stuff that you shared is really powerful. And I hope people that are watching, that you listened and heard that. We got to go to a commercial but up next, we'll have some more with Debbie Campany. The Unfair Advantage Interactive Experience. There's nothing like it. Go to our website, click on our store. Every interactive item has a QR code. Scan the code with your phone and get the latest message from Robbie and the Unfair Advantage ministry team. Get the Unfair Advantage fresh every day. We have exclusive interactive apparel and merchandise for you to choose from. Scan the QR code on your UFA, T-shirt, hoodie, or mug, and access daily inspirational messages, daily encouragement, fresh scriptures, fresh testimonies, faith-filled prayer, and so much more. Go to www.unfairadvantageministry.com, click on the store, and pick your interactive apparel and merchandise, and access the Unfair Advantage Experience anointing. I want you to share with my audience what we talked about before film of the day. You mentioned three prophetic words. I believe someone needs to hear your revelation. Well, um, yeah, yeah. the first one was, it's the three R's. Um, and the first one is revive. Amen. And I'm gonna give you all three of them because in giving you all three of them, then I'll go back and explain them. Um, yeah. It's revive yeah. and in, you, you are revived First, God comes along and breathes life back into you and you are revived, right? Then yes. you, in order to be the next one, you have to be revived, which is restored. So he comes along and the restoration process begins. Yes. And once you've been revived and once you are walking through the process of restoration, you will then become relevant. Yes. And I want to talk a little bit about revive because as we're sitting here, God yeah. began to um, show me yeah. a, a picture of this. And God works on the prophetic with me through a lot of pictures yeah. as well. And just imagine this. You are laying out and God is performing CPR on you, wow. reviving you, reviving you from every traumatic event in your life, reviving you from the pain, Ooh. the loss, the suffering, yes. addictions, um, reviving you from loss. I hear loss. Mm -hmm. There's loss that, that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a divorce. It could yes. be the loss of a loved one. Yes. It could be the loss of a job. Yes. It could be the loss of identity. Yeah. It, it, Whew. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Robbie. Yeah. Robbie, Come Robbie, on. Robbie, Robbie. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> gee, I can't go there yet. I yeah. know that. Yeah. So, so here I am laying out and God is breathing life into me. Now, how's God breathing life into me? God is breathing life into me through people like Robbie, yes. through prophets, through yes. pastors, Come through evangelists, yes. through people that you may meet in a 12-step program. They are reviving you. They are breathing life into you. Okay? I might not have the courage to ask for help. Amen. And, and God sends you along yes. with a word, yep. and that's reviving you. That's reviving that wow. person. That's taking that person into an area where they can actually begin a restoration process. Mm -hmm. And this process, okay, this is one, the restoration process, you never want to rush. Amen. Amen. You can't get from zero right. to a thousand 
in 30 seconds. Goodness. And especially for people like me yeah. who come out of a background of addictions and codependency and that, I want it now. Yeah, that's right. Give it to me now. I'll take the short course. Don't give me the long one, right? Yeah. So no, the restoration process Amen. is going to take some time because I may have to go around a mountain 50 Amen. times before I learn what I need to learn in this process. You know, Ed and I got to visit um, Turkey and we went to the churches mm -hmm. and we got to see the rooms and yeah. they were in process of, of restoring Ooh. like Ephesus yeah, yeah. and digging and bringing it all back. And it was a process and this thing takes years, wow. right? And um, the only way that I myself can shorten the length of time that it could take is if I'm willing to do the work. Right. See, there's work in the restoration process. Yes. I have to be willing. I have to, I have to be willing to put the feet to the faith. I have to be willing to look at the places I need to. I have to be willing to take the direction. I have to have the courage to change. That's right. Oof. Courage to change yeah. the things I can yeah. and the wisdom to know the things that I can. Right, yeah. So I'm operating in acceptance Woo. as well. Yeah. And once I've gone and go, going am going through, because at the same time, okay, this is just coming, Robbie. It's coming. Yeah, it's this is the restoration is yeah. happening. The relevance is coming up alongside of it. And the relevance is coming through the connection. <laughs> and you know, I may not know what my purpose is yeah. and, until I get into that restoration process. Amen. Amen. Every one of us has a purpose. That's right. And the other part is, is my purpose is mine. Don't try to come up and act like me yeah, yeah, and yeah, do what right. I do. And cause you're not going to get it. Be you. That's right. That's the key. Be you find out who you are, right. find out where you can be relevant because you know, Robbie's called in one way. I'm called in another That's way. Right. You may be called, at your job That's just right. to be the light in the darkness. It doesn't, it's wherever you are relevant, wherever you can make a difference. And then this brings me to the seashell story. You ever heard the sea, no. seashell story? Blah, blah, blah. Sea, <laughs> seashell story. And you know, there was this, this little boy walking down the, mm -hmm. the beach and there were these starfish all over and um, this old man came up to him and said, oh, what are you doing, little boy? Because he was throwing one starfish at a time back into the ocean. Oh, wow. And he says, you're never going to make a difference. Look at all of these that have washed up. You're not going to make a difference to all these starfish. He picked up a starfish and threw it back and said, I made a difference to that one. Ooh. If I can touch one person and they touch another person who, who maybe touches 100 people, that person that started touched 101 people. Hallelujah. We don't understand. God is a multiplication God. That's right. And he will multiply That's us. That's right. I feel led right now by the Holy Spirit because I, I feel the Holy Ghost on you right now. And I feel that there's somebody watching right now on there that needs you to pray those three R's on them right now. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hey, I'm going to just reach my hand out in their Thank direction. Thank you, Jesus. And say, Father God, right now, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Those Jesus. that are watching. Thank you, Father. I just speak Thank you, Jesus. revival, Hallelujah. revival to them. Lord. Hallelujah. Let your breath even touch them right now, Father. Let them feel your breath. Let them feel that wind just touch them. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, Man, revive you. them yes. so that they can then yes. begin the restoration process. And Lord, yes, Lord, Father. oh <laughs> Lord, show them that they are worthy of restoration. Hallelujah. Show them that it is possible. They're not too old. You're not too old. You're not too old for restoration. Yes. I am 60 years old you, and Jesus. I have been in my restoration process. You are not too old. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that as they continue to walk in restoration, yes. that you show them their relevance, yes, Lord. Lord. Open it up. And I'm just seeing right now where you're beginning to walk down this path and it's, and it's very small to begin with, but as you continue to walk, it's going to get wider and wider and wider because God's going to show you more Hallelujah. and more where your relevance lies. Thank you, Jesus. He's going to show you where you need to walk, where you don't need to walk. That's yes. a big one right now. Yes. There's places that some of you are walking that you need to turn around and walk away from. Thank you, I'm Lord. just going to tell you, walk away Thank you. from that person. Walk away from that place. Walk away from that thing. And then I am hearing very loudly right now where 
God saying, ask for help. Yes, yes, Your pride God. is keeping you from asking for help. Amen. Reach out, take a risk, Amen, Jesus. take facing rejection. Amen. And if you get rejected by the first one, you Amen. keep going until finally, Amen. finally, you get the help that you need. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now that was powerful. Guys, I mean, I'm blown away with the Holy Spirit showing up here. I'm so glad that you came here today. This was super, super powerful. Man, I mean, this whole thing was prophetic. Guys, I hope that you felt what I felt here today. And I'm just praying and thanking Jesus Christ for all this. We'll see you next time. Again, I just want to thank you for your insight and all the revelation on the three R's. Guys, stay tuned to the next time. See you again. This world had a hold on me, yeah. I could barely breathe in the grips of the enemy. Beat down, broken, and damaged. Then you came and you set me free, yeah. And you washed me clean. Jesus, you were all I need. This is the unfair advantage. No weapon formed here shall prosper. No fear, for here comes the doctor. Almighty Jehovah Rapha. Nothing compete with what he can offer.